Who are you? 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 Juice World. Morgan Freeman's son. Kendrick Lamar. Travis Scott. Aubrey Drake Graham. Post Malone. Man, I be that pretty motherfucker, man. Do do the loot do 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 the loot do do the loot do 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 loot do 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 yeah. Wouldn't you agree that Nardwar is one of the most likable media personalities on this planet? Ask yourself why you think that is. We watch his content and we enjoy his interactions with some of our favourite artists, but do we ever really get the opportunity to stop and have a look at why the interactions with these artists are so pleasant and enjoyable to watch? Maybe before we discuss Nardwar's extreme social intelligence, we should give everyone a quick refresher on who Nardwar actually is. Nardwar is an energetic, eccentric, and just downright absurd media personality who interviews some of the biggest a-list musicians in the world. He's interviewed almost any A-list musician that you can think of, from Post Malone to Billie Eilish to Ski Mask the Slum God. The magic of his interviews is that he does extensive research to find out personable, unknown facts about that specific artist and it always blows their mind. Right off the bat, I have a gift for you, a Freestyle Fellowship Whoa. 45. Oh, what the hell you know about this? Oh my, how you know I mess with Freestyle Fellowship? Oh, you are Denzel Curry, we have to know. The fuck does he know that? Whoa, not even my fans know I'd Whoa. How you whoa. He also buys them gifts based around some of maybe their lesser known interests, such as records that maybe influence that artist on the come up. As you can guess, this also blows their mind pretty regularly. So let's talk about social intelligence. How does Nardwa get some of the most influential people to like him with about three minutes of talking where that same artist might be in a feud with another interviewer in the same time? When you break Nardwa down to his core, there are hundreds of things that make him such a likable person, but in this video, we're gonna be focusing on three main ones. Number one, Nardwa never underestimates the power of a gift. Take note of that. Never underestimate the power of a gift. Now, giving gifts is almost an uncomfortable or awkward thing to do for someone, especially if it's out of context or unexpected. Buying a gift for someone can often take them back. They might be like, whoa. But if you can get over that initial hump of awkwardness, the results are surprisingly long-term. Gifts are one of the most underestimated pieces of influence in the whole world. You can be an absolute nobody and get the attention of some of the most influential people in the world through one gift. And that's Nardwa's secret. That's how this weird middle-aged Canadian dude gets the attention of people like Kendrick Lamar, Post Malone, Odd Future, within about three minutes of conversing with them. Here's some of his great examples. Snoop Doggy Dog, what can you tell the people about this VHS cassette right here? I was curious, did you put this out? Oh my, Kev. This is what the fuck I've been trying to find. My Smoke Fest Volume 1. This is the first one I ever put out, Kev. You don't even have a copy yourself? No, I don't. So would you like this too, Snoop Doggy Dog? Gladly give you a dollar for it. So, uh, wow, okay, we'll do that. Compensated for your time and your troubles. I've been looking for this shit, homie, on some real shit. I've really been trying to find, this is my first one I found, uh, volume two, they got volume two, you can get that anywhere. This shit right here is rare. Is this where it all started, <coughs> right here, with the rump shaker? <laughs> Pharrell, is this where we started? Pharrell Williams, the rump shaker. Yeah. This is this is this is one of the most impressive interviews I've ever experienced in my life. Seriously. Oh well, thank you so much. It's great to be able to talk to you guys. This is this is insane, man. Do you see this? And that's the underlying power of a gift. The person who you give the gift to almost feels like they're in debt to you. When you give someone a gift, something triggers in their brain and they suddenly have this overwhelming desire to do something for you. It's called the law of reciprocation. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? I owe you a gift. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah, I owe you a gift. If they aren't able to reciprocate by giving you a gift in return, they'll reciprocate in other ways. That's a joke, but seriously, they will go out of their way to try and do something to repay you. Even if it's just as simple as being nice to you. That sounds so sad, like, if you want people to be nice to you, just go out and buy them gifts, then you'll finally have some friends. <laughs> That's me though, seriously. I should go and buy some gifts for people. I need some friends ASAP. Giving gifts feels undesirable on the surface though. Why? Because it usually costs you money in the short term and you don't really see results immediately. It's not like you spend $50 and you get $50 back. You just kind of see weird things happen in your life that you maybe wouldn't expect otherwise. Gift giving is something where you can't expect results overnight. You just have to trust the process. Number two, Nardwa embraces his weirdness and he uses it for success. In so many areas of life, those weird people who go against the status quo are often the ones who are rewarded on the highest level. Nardwa is 
weird, like really weird. But do you ever realize that that's actually the reason why you love him? Nadwa knows that he's weird and he's just adopted it as part of his personality. And how refreshing is it to see people who just expose themselves roots and all and they don't care about how they're viewed? Those same people who when you say you're a weirdo, they just go ha ha yeah and then they just scull a beer or some shit. It's the same reason why so many people love Donald Trump. When the media go on about all these terrible things that he's done, he just kind of goes, yeah, yeah, I'm a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, I've done some terrible things. Anyway, we're gonna build the wall. Or why genuine YouTubers just do so much better on this platform. Don't you just love it when someone embraces who they are and just becomes completely secure about it? He doesn't say it directly, but you can tell that Nardwa is comfortable with being weird just from his demeanor. People who can just accept who they are and own it, weird or normal, have a serious advantage in life they are always way more likable than people who are pretending to be something else. And it applies in so many other areas of your life as well. Finance, I love this video by Dave Ramsey, be weird or be broke. Talks about how people who don't take the standard route with finance always end up acquiring the most. If you wanna win with money, let me give you a good idea. Figure out what most people are doing and run in the other direction. Most people are broke. Most people look good and they're broke. Fitness, those people who have a weird strict diet and always have that weird workout routine always end up having the best bodies somehow. In your career, those people who always go for the weird niche or specialization always end up having the highest income. Be weird, be like Nardwa, use your weirdness to show people that you are comfortable with yourself and that you're not looking for their approval. Number three, he focuses on the vibe and the mood rather than the words he is using. The number one sign of a socially intelligent person, they do not think about themselves in a conversation. Socially intelligent people don't even think about the words that are coming out of their mouth. All they focus on is the vibe and the mood because that is all that really matters. Nardwa is the master of this. His whole focus during his interviews is making the other person feel good and making sure that the other person is having a good time. To the point where when other musicians ask him questions, he doesn't even answer them, he just puts it straight back on them because he knows that people don't care about his opinion. What do you think about that though? Like a celebrity sort of sleepwear. Celebrity sleepwear. Good question, Nardwar. What do you think about it? I was curious, what do you think about that? Well, I think that works quite well. I think it works good too. This looks like some shit I'd wear anyway. Let's be honest. If you actually listen to the words coming out of Nardwar's mouth, it's all dribble. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Do, 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 do. He uses words and sentences in a context that you would never see in a normal conversation. How does he get away with it? Because he's focusing on the vibe and the mood of the situation rather than the words he's using. He could probably say, blue cheese garden chair of the fourth. Are you a fan, little Uzi Vert? And the artist would probably just be like, oh yeah, 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 cool. Because the vibe of the whole conversation just makes it flow. Now change that to blue cheese, garden chair, the fourth. Are you a fan? Little Uzi Vert. And the artist would probably just be like, what the fuck? Be like Nardwa. Focus on the vibe and the mood and don't worry about the words that you're using. If the vibe is good, it doesn't matter what words you are using. Make the other person feel good. Don't worry about yourself. Anyway, that's the three reasons why I think Nardwa is like a super socially intelligent person and some of the things that you might be able to take from him. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and if you are new, hit that subscribe button or whatever you wanna do. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Keep real, peace.